you guys know that 70% of people hate their jobs? 70%. That number is huge. That means if I divide the room about right here, you guys enjoy your jobs, but all of you hate your jobs. When I heard that number, I could not believe it. That means statistically speaking, I've hated nearly three quarters of all the work that I've done. Now I know that just is not true. So I just could not believe this. So I decided to talk to some of my friends and see if they'd back me up. I was shocked to find out that again, nearly three quarters of my friends have hated all the jobs that they've ever worked at. And I just can't understand this. Maybe I'm just an optimist and enjoy everything that I've done. Maybe I see everything as positive in retrospect, but thinking back to the jobs that I've had, I've definitely experienced hardships and failures. Yet I still enjoyed it, and no, I'm not a masochist. So how does that happen? I decided to think back to the first job I ever had. I was nine years old, and I'd been programming for about two years. I programmed in Java, which is a great language for getting started, and I'd make fun games and applications and show it to friends and family, and they'd always pad my ego and say it was great. But one day, I decided to post some of the games that I made online and let anybody buy it. I made my first and only sale. Somebody bought this game, Tic-Tac-Toe, for $2.50. Can you believe anybody would spend $2.50 on such a horrible user interface? But it made me realize that my programming skills were actually worth something. So I spent the next couple of years improving those skills and greatly improving my user interface design skills, and I started taking on some freelance work. Now, I'd get a lot of requests, but I was very selective about the work that I would take on. I'd only take on the work that, where I felt like the programming was something new or fun or enjoyable. If it was just the money that was interesting to me, I wouldn't take the job. So maybe that's the key to enjoying one's work. Be selective about the work you choose to take on. But that doesn't quite work. After talking to enough friends, a lot of them were very picky or selective about the jobs they chose to work at, yet they still hated their jobs. So I decided, let me think back to my job after that. At the ripe old age of 14, I had a book contract in my hands from McGraw-Hill. They wanted me to write a textbook on programming oriented towards teenagers, help get young people into programming and technology. Now, when I was 14 years old, I would have a lot of friends come over to my house and we'd all hang out. And what I would end up doing is teaching them how to program, teaching them those Java skills that I had from earlier. And this was frustrating to me because there are really no good books or resources to get young people interested in programming. So I reached out to McGraw-Hill and I sent the editor an email, and I said, please have somebody write a book on programming oriented towards teenagers. She skimmed that email and misread it and thought I wanted to write the book. She had no idea how old I was. So she emailed back and said, great, send us a proposal. <laughs> now, I'm the son of two Hollywood screenwriters, yet I hate writing. That's just not my thing. I love programming, but I can't do writing. But I said yes to the proposal, and I ended up writing it because I truly believed in what this book would be. So I sent the proposal in, and literally 24 hours later, McGraw-Hill called and said, we love it, get started right away, you'll have the contract in two weeks. So I did, I started writing and programming, and I was ecstatic, I told all my friends I was gonna be a published author with McGraw-Hill. Two weeks came and went, no contract. Two more weeks, still no contract. Four weeks later, I get a phone call from the editor at McGraw-Hill. Ian, we're so sorry, but we decided not to give you the contract. We think the concept is too boring. I had told all my friends I was gonna be a published author. I bragged about it all over the place, and now I wasn't, like that, that's not okay, but more than that. <laughs> more than that. I truly believed in what the book was. I wanted to educate young people on programming. I wanted to connect them with technology. And there was no option for that now. So I don't give up, that's not me. So I went ahead and revised the proposal into something called Programming Video Games for the Evil Genius. And I sent that proposal back into McGraw-Hill. A year later, this was in every Barnes and Noble and Borders across the country. They went ahead with the book. But then the most amazing thing happened. The reviews 
started flooding in on Amazon. People loved the book. They thanked me for the book. They thanked me for teaching their sons and daughters how to program to get them into technology. And that's exactly what I wanted out of it. So maybe then the answer to enjoying one's work isn't just to be selective, but it's also to see the bigger picture of what you're working on and truly enjoy your work. But there's more to it. After talking to enough friends, I quickly realized that yes, people were selective about the jobs they took. They saw the bigger picture of the jobs that they had, yet they still didn't genuinely enjoy it. So I thought ahead to my next job. This is a couple years after the book came out. And I'd started getting into iPhone app programming. Now, iPhone app programming is great because you have a captive audience of tens of millions of iPhone users. And I was one of the first developers to get into it. So everyone was seeing the apps that I was putting out. Now, the first app I wanted to make was called Car Finder and it would help you find your car in a parking lot. And yes, I came up with the idea after I was with my family, and we forgot where we parked, and it took us about two hours to find the car. So I knew that we needed this app, and probably other people needed the app as well. So I got started on it. I spent about three hours on it, and I hit this bug. I just could not figure it out. I knew it wasn't that hard of a bug to fix, but I just couldn't figure it out. I knew I needed to take a break. I didn't want to take a break though. I was enjoying working on the app. I didn't want to step back from it. But I forced myself to. I took a break and during that break, I decided to work on another app called Emergency Distress Beacon. Super simple. It just displays your GPS latitude and longitude and that's it. It took me about 30 minutes to write, posted it on the App Store, and it was a great way to clear my mind. So when I jumped back into Car Finder, I was able to find that bug in 10 minutes and two hours later, submit the app to the App Store. About two weeks later, and tens of thousands of downloads later, Car Finder was featured in the New York Times, the front page of Dig, and Apple.com. But then something even cooler happened. I got an email from someone. He was sailing in the Atlantic Ocean with three of his friends, and their boat started taking on water. Their GPS transponder was damaged, and they were on the radio with the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard could not find them. He ended up getting my app and using it to relay his latitude and longitude to the Coast Guard. This was the app I made during my break, Emergency Distress Beacon. And he credited me with saving his life and the life of his three friends. And to me, that's huge. So maybe the key to enjoying one's work isn't just to be selective. It's not just to see the bigger picture of what you're working on. But it's also to not live break to break and to use breaks instead as a way to step back and come up with new ideas and new projects and figure out what you really want to work on. So I told this set of ideals to some of my friends, and they said, Ian, that sounds great, but it's just not realistic. Life doesn't always work out that way. And that's true. Life doesn't always work out that way. But if you live by these set of ideals, it's much easier to enjoy this game of life. So I remember one situation where it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. I was working on an iPhone app with a friend, and the idea was basically anybody could sing into the iPhone app, and it would auto-tune their voice. And auto-tuning is a well-known effect now that basically makes anybody sound like an amazing singer. And trust me, I need it. I'm tone deaf. So we worked on this app, and it worked. And we knew that if we really wanted it to get big, we needed some, someone famous, someone known for auto-tuning their songs to really put his name behind it. So we went to a famous artist known for auto-tuning, and he loved it. He said, you know what, let's do this right now. Put my face on the app. Put my name all over the app. You're going to be famous. You're going to get so much money. And I let that get to my head. I wanted that fame. I wanted that fortune. And I never took the time to take a step back, be selective about who we were working with. So I went ahead and started working on the app. And about a week into it, I noticed an identical app appear in the App Store. Turns out this artist took the app to a different development firm that could do it and give him better rates on how much money he was going to make from it. Took it to them. We had no contracts in place. It was completely legal. And they released it. The app ended up making about a million dollars in the first two months. So instead of driving my Ferrari home, I'll be taking the T. Now, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, it doesn't matter. Money doesn't mean anything. It would be great to have that much money. And this was a situation where I lost that game of life. But you know what? It made me realize that these ideals that I laid out, being selective about the work you take on, seeing the bigger picture, and not living break to break, is absolutely critical. 
There's this mantra that a lot of people live by. Work hard, play hard. I hate it. It implies that work is dreadful and play is fun. Isn't that the wrong way to live your life? If you're truly enjoying the game of life and living life to the fullest, shouldn't it really just be play hard? Your work turns into fun, and fun is play, so it's just play hard. So I'm asking all of you, everybody listening to this TED Talk, the 70% of people who hate their jobs, everybody everywhere, all humans in this world, please try to live by these ideals. Be selective about the work you take on. See the bigger picture of things. And don't live break to break. Play hard. Thank you.